and this new expansion is called Port of Call. But if you're not familiar with how Dead Reckoning plays, I did already cover that one in the past, and I will roll that footage for you in a minute here. But first, I'll let you know a little bit about the expansion and what it's going to be adding into the game. First of all, this is an expansion that's just going to be adding a bunch of new content that you can just mix in with the game, whether you're playing with the base game or with any of the previously released expansions. This is going to be adding a bunch of new Sailor ability cards that can replace your deckhand crew, eight new shipboards, each with their own asymmetric abilities, adding a bunch more variability into the game, and also adding different incentives depending on the board that you choose. There's going to be a couple new ship upgrades introduced with this expansion as well to augment your ships in some very new ways. Five new ocean boards, nine new achievement tokens. But my favorite aspect of this expansion is the new mechanism it adds into the game, which is the concept of exploding cubes. If you're familiar with this game, you know that it uses a cube tower. Anytime that you launch your cannons, we're going to be dropping cubes into the top of that tower, and they're going to be rolling out into different areas on a board, having a different impact depending on where they land. This new type of cube actually has an icon on one side of the cube, and if that side happens to roll up, then it's going to be counting as if a cannon was rolled. This adds a really nice layer because now not only do you care where that cube lands on the board, but you also care if that icon happens to show. You'll be able to gain these cubes in a few different ways, but the primary way is through the card crafting and the different cards that you're able to acquire. In addition to this new expansion, this campaign is also going to be introducing a new big box solution that's designed to fit into a calyx, and it also has front-facing doors that open outwards, so you don't even have to take it out of the calyx in order to get to all the different components. All the components also have a spot in each of the different drawers, and it will allow you to keep that cube tower built and not have to rebuild it every time that you play the game. If you're interested in card crafting or pirate themed games or both, you'll definitely want to check this one out. And like I said, I did cover the original campaign back when it launched, so I will roll that previous footage for you if you're not familiar with this game. But you can find a link to the campaign in the description below, and of course, click to get notified. But this is a competitive card crafting 4X game that plays 1 to 4 players and takes about 90 to 150 minutes to play. And this is coming from the designer John D. Clare, who created and kind of pioneered the whole card crafting mechanism. I'm sure he wasn't the first one to do it, but he is the one that made it famous. This one would have been my pick of the week, but luckily I don't have to do that because the Discord has done that for me because this one is our Discord pick of the week. And it's no surprise because this game offers a lot to be excited about. First off, the game offers you a lot of different paths to victory. In this game, you're trying to complete achievements and there are a whole bunch of different achievements to complete. You can either explore enough islands, deliver enough cargo, gain a certain amount of gold, own enough buildings, achieve a really high level crew or a really high level ship, win battles, sink ships, and many others but the catch here is that you only need to complete four of these in order to win the game so you can kind of plan out what you want to go for but if the luck doesn't roll in your favor you can always pivot to something else that seems a little bit more attainable and i really love that option in a game and like I said, this is a card crafting game. So the way that this works is that this is also a deck building game. So you're going to be recycling your deck. But the interesting thing about it is that you'll be able to get different upgrades. And these upgrades come in the form of clear cards. And you'll be able to slide those into a sleeve in order to administer different upgrades to your existing cards. And you can actually do this multiple times as long as those different upgrades don't overlap with each other. And yes, there's a really cool ship here that you're going to be using as a cube tray anytime you want to blast your cannons at the other ships, and I will get back to that shortly. But the way that this game works is that players are going to be putting out a grid of cards, and the first row of that grid is going to be revealed with the other ones being hidden. And beside each row you're going to have each of your advancement decks within a box, and these are going to be organized into their different levels in ascending order, and as you advance throughout the game you're going to gain access to more and more advanced upgrade cards. Each player also has their own upgradable ship and ship token that they'll be using to track their progress out on the board and track their progress upgrading their ship. And you'll be able to do different things like add additional sails in order to move faster, add additional cannons in order to have more attack power, and of course upgrade your crew for all sorts of different benefits. But the game's played over a series of rounds until a player is able to complete four of those different achievements. And there's going to be two phases that players are going through. The first phase is the main phase, and this is where players can take as many actions as they want or are able. And you'll be able to do all sorts of different things like load and unload cargo and coins to and from your ship and your current location. Or you can also rearrange the cargo and coins on your ship or even jettison it into the sea if you think someone might be trying to steal it from you. 
One of your more limited actions is your movement action because you'll only be able to move as many spaces as sails that you have on your ship, but you can split this up however you want and perform actions before, during, or after your movements. And the different locations might have some different options for you. For example, if you visit a location with an advancement card, then you'll have the option to purchase that card. Or if you visit a location with another ship, that might result in an encounter depending on if you or the other ship is aggressive. And of course, you'll also be able to play the cards from your hand in order to perform different abilities and get different bonuses to do things like gain control of the different islands, generate resources, construct buildings, or upgrade your ship and crew. And the battles in this game can happen in a variety of different ways. You can battle against other players, NPC merchant ships, or even against the player's buildings. And during the battle, players will be able to play battle cards in order to get different abilities or upgrades that can help them against their opponent. But the main portion here is that you're going to be gathering up as many cubes as you have cannons and you're going to be dropping them into the cube tray. And you're going to be resolving those cubes depending on where they fall in the cube tray and these can do different things like grant you different resources, inflict damage on your opponent, or earn you crowns which is what you want to be able to win the battle. Which is a really neat mechanism because you could actually take more damage than the other ship but still win the battle which I think is really cool. But what else is really cool is that there's actually a spot on the cube tray that's called the exploding cube and if your cube lands on that you're going to pick it up as well as another cube of the same color and then drop it back into the tray so this creates a sort of chaining event where that can happen repeatedly allowing you to get more and more cubes into battle and just adding more excitement to the game and after all the actions are taken we move into the cleanup phase where players will manage the board decide if they want to be in pirate or merchant mode for the next round and then they'll also be able to sleeve any of the advancements that they've collected and they'll be discarding their hand and drawing back up to their hand limit and one thing to note is that there is already two expansions added to the game and these are just going to add more content and some more mechanisms as well but the game is played over a series of sagas with these expansions and each saga is going to be adding more of that content in. And it's just a really great way to add a little bit of mechanisms at a time instead of just adding a whole bunch to learn all at once. And the Letters of Mark is also a saga expansion, so this is going to be adding a third saga to the game, but it also comes with some non-saga related content as well that you can just go ahead and include in your game regardless of how you're playing it. And as always, if you're interested to learn more, I have links in the description below.